I'm on Adderall. Oh, that's the way to do it. <laughs> hey, uh, I mean, not like a lot, not like a, not like a inappropriate amount. Did Samantha get any hijinks that almost derailed the presentation? <laughs> well, that was the thing. Here's the thing. I rolled up, and all of a sudden, I, I, I thought I was a chicken, and <laughs> I just kept trying to eat grubs. Hey, Mike, your mic is really hot. So am I. Mm. <laughs> so is my bod. <laughs> and you are on Adderall. This is great. <laughs> the, the episode's going to be 20 minutes long, but it'll be our funniest episode yet. Yeah. yeah. Check, check. Is that, how's that? That's pretty good. What do you guys think? I don't like this. I don't, I don't like this lighting. I'm going to be honest <laughs> with y'all. I'm not. Samantha. <laughs> Probably hanging out with her with Doctor Bombay and her <laughs> Doctor Bombay. What was her mom's name? Endora. Endora. God damn it! That's right. <laughs> yeah, you sound like an asshole asking. That. <laughs> <laughs> sound like a real dipshit. What was, what was Paul Lynn's name? <laughs> a good time. <laughs> it's good. There's we're we're once again hitting the the cross section of Paul Lynn fans. <laughs> Oh, look at that. One That's... of the fucking dudes at the, uh, at the, uh, I don't mean to say fucking, I don't mean to swear. It's, I don't mean to start swearing immediately, yeah. but one of the guys uh, at the company randomly made a Paul Lind reference, and I was like, we need to be in business together. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Maybe it was just a subtle nod. It's like letting you know I'm that, a listener. Yeah, he's a, that he's a fan. I'm a listener. It's like a, it's like a QAnon handshake or whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that most listeners uh, like to not identify themselves. <laughs> <laughs> they, they download it off Tor browsers so they can't, can't be right. traced. Oops. Hey, Dave, Cheryl, I haven't said hi to you yet. Hey, buddy. How are you? How are you? I'm good. Your Chris Gethart thing is awesome, dude. Yeah, I'm excited about that. Well, you know what's exciting to you is uh, you've got uh, you got James Gunn, you got Pat Oswalt, you got probably other real cool people that mm -hmm. are enjoying the fruits of your labor. The the guy that uh, did the original Suicide Squad shared it too. I, I'm not really sure who he is. Oh, oh David yeah. Ayer, the movie. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Yeah, David Ayer. Right. Did you did, what was it? Training day. Is it a training day and harsh yeah. times and end of the watch? Come on, yeah. Brian. You know a few too, right? <laughs> God, this is a fun bit for me. <laughs> Brian doesn't know movies. Yeah, Brian, who, who who lit that movie again? <sighs> who what movie? <laughs> who lit uh, Training Day? Who was that? That movie <laughs> was lit. <laughs> 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 Fuck yeah, it was lit. I think Ethan Hawke was in it, right? He was in that. He okay, was, then. Go to Dr. Hell. Dre. Dr. Dre has a rare acting role in it. Oh, wow. From Yo MTV Raps, mm -hmm. Dr. Dre. No, no, not that. I mean, yes, some of his music <laughs> appeared on Yo MTV mm. Raps, but he was not the host of Yo MTV Raps with oh. Ed Lover. That's a different Dr. Dre. Well, I'm, I'm color me baffled. One, one was a beat. Doctor and one <laughs> was a podiatrist. Yeah, that's right. So who lit is who lights? Is it the best boy who does the lighting or is it the gaffer? Kevin, I'll let you take this one. The <laughs> director of cinematography says I'm gonna shoot it this way. And then the gaffer is the one who runs all the lights mm -hmm. and you know runs all the power and everything. Who rigs the lights? That that would probably be like the the, the best boy in the gaffer. The rigger. Does the best boy? Work? Yeah, the rigger. Does the best boy work? For it's a yeah, I, okay. You know, don't. You you you're doing this. I'm not doing anything. I'm just I'm hearing what you're saying. It's, a, it's literally a union job. Oh, okay, like the Teamsters. No, the Teamsters drive trucks. I said like the Teamsters. No, they drive trucks. These are these are laborers. Oh, like the and craftsmen. What is it, the AFL CIO? Is that one of no, them? No, they're uh, they're IATI. I used to be IATI in a different life. Uh oh, did you ever? Did you ever drop that's some stuff and yell That's when you roll all sevens. You go IATI. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we roll. tried to make this same joke yeah. at the same time. <laughs> you can't roll sevens on a six sided die. Well, that's because it's a seven sided die. That's yep. <laughs> come on, Kevin. Yeah, fair, fair. <laughs> you sound real foolish right now.
It's called GURPS, Generic mm-hmm. Universal Role Playing Systems, made by Steve Jackson. Oh, oh, that checks out. Our listeners know that. Mm-hmm. The very first time I ever went to a comic book convention, I was uh, 13 years old, and Steve uh-huh. Jackson play tested a game that I got to play called Darwinopoly. <laughs> sounds like a lot of fun for a 13 year old. That sounds like a Christian scientist game. <laughs> mm-hmm. And at the end, it proves every time it's not real. That's right. What do you do in Darwinopoly? Sin against God. Yeah, I just fucking make up bullshit that's not real. <laughs> We're all like right. caveman tribes or something. Somebody had a baby and the baby died and we used it as food. That's all I remember. That sounds like something Satanists would do. <laughs> was, your character's, was your character's name Casey Anthony? <laughs> <laughs> well, what happened to her? Nothing. She's living She's a good life. She's fucking partying in Florida. Yeah, getting hit on and hit hit on in bars that have have sh- drink specials. Two dollar Bahama Mamas. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like drink, yeah, drink specials. It's specifically for drinks with funny names that mm-hmm. come in come in uh, Easter colors. Mm-hmm. And I love her. And, and I love her. What are you eating? I hope you eat a lot of crunchy food on this episode. Oh shit! I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, I just, I just got back from a high-powered business meeting uh-huh. Uh-huh. At, a, at a place with video games. <laughs> <laughs> you play any discs, discs of Tron? Ooh, do they have discs of Tron? No. God damn it. It's a pretty cool King Kong VR game where you put on VR helmet. It's like a ride, but you also like swat bugs away with your hand. <laughs> It might just be me, me, me sitting in my car in the parking lot. I, honestly, I did a lot of Adderall. I did a lot of Adderall. That's right. I think I'm a, a working piece in a corporate environment, I've decided. Like, I think that I, nice. you know, I, I used to think I didn't fit in. But now I think that, I don't know, I want to make moves. I want to talk about demos. I want to talk about target demos. I want to talk about quarters. It's just, that's kind of my world now. So I know you guys kind of know me as this showbiz entertainer type, uh, but things are, I'm just letting you know things are changing. So if you notice a different, more business attitude for the rest of this episode, uh, and that a- episode is what we call when we live <laughs> bite size. It's like bite size yeah. nuggets for the people, which is a way that, uh, you know, the audience digests content. Mm. Oh. Because, hey, let me tell you guys, in my world, in my world, content is king. Okay. Well, this is, this is going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is, it's always fun when you embody the least likable people <laughs> any of us can think of. That's, that's entertaining. But, you know what's likable, though? Having hmm. a lot of money. Because you oh. know what I like? Having a lot of money. <laughs> Well, you, you sound like a businessman. That's what. That's how we talk, right? A lot of a lot of changes have happened in the last uh, twenty four hours to me and mm-hmm. my big my big biz biz successes. <laughs> have you ever seen that? Have you ever seen that show Succession? Have you ever seen that TV show The Paper Chase? Let me put it in a more obscure <laughs> TV show that no one will relate to, which is not about business. That's I think that show's about school. Actually, about law school. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I don't like that show. Uh, <laughs> let's talk about business. Uh, mm-hmm. It's a succession scenario without any of the comedy. It's basically the world that Good. I'm trafficking in. The last thing we would want to do is have there be any comedy at all in what you're doing. <laughs> well, fear not. I'm all about the business. This is biz. Well, you know, you're, you're due for a second act. As ludicrous as as ludicrous said, my business, my business. You guys are familiar with Luda. I am. Ludafisk. Oh, that's that Scandinavian fish, man. Yeah, right. With, with like lie in it. I don't think that's what he's talking about. With lie in it. Yeah, I think mm. there's lie in Ludafisk, isn't there? How much is that? How much? What's what's the IPO on that? Just keep chewing that food, man. <laughs> But you know what? That's a real business thing because that's how you kind of start to exert dominance in, in a negotiation setting, right? Well, again, you know, I feel like the Alpha Brain Monkey mindset that I've already kind of brought to the podcast is just it, it's it's it 
is simply a backbone for what I am uh, doing biz- business wise now. Mm. That's it's just one more outlet, one more <laughs> one more direction for that mindset to take just you. One more one more way to dominate. So you dominate by, right. by chewing pretzels over everybody talking. I mean, right. yes, because that's what people are going to hear, and they're not pretzels. They're they're carbless Doritos. <laughs> 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 that's that's great. Well, I'm glad that all of your recent ventures are all things that a sociopath would succeed at. <laughs> well, I mean, if sociopath means a person that cuts everyone off at the knees in order to get money, then okay, I'm a sociopath. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you guys ready here? Yeah, time is money, and I need to get this uh, over with. You've got me for 30. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> You gotta say go a lot every time you make a, yeah. an imperative. It's gonna be go. You've got me for thirty, Kevin. Go. I'm gonna read these stories like I'm Don Machida, the Micro Machine Man. Is that that guy's name? Yeah, Don Machida. Don't don't say it like I'm a jackass when I know who he is. <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. In a in a rare in a rare turn, I did not know his name either. <laughs> did you know that off the top of your head? Yeah, Don Machida. Mm. You think people call him Don Micro Machida? <laughs> <laughs> At the convention Kevin went to when he was 13 years old, they did. Right when Darwinopoly came to a close, he went and saw the Micro Machines guy. Is he still alive? Yeah, I, I thought he was dead and I looked him up not too long ago. And he just retired. What's his net worth? That's just, sorry, that's a business question. That's how I think. Before taxes, after taxes. <laughs> Uh, oh, I'm sorry, John Machida. Oh, well, well, well. Okay, well, there we go. Exactly. Big time in me. Exactly. Technically, who won this conversation? It was me. <laughs> Wait a minute. And uh, his net worth is $3 million. Oh. Wow. Good friends. Is it all Micro Machine money? Uh, well, he did FedEx as well. You know, when it absolutely positively has to be there overnight. Do you think he got all the Micro Machines for free? Because <laughs> that's probably... <laughs> It's not liquid. It's just that he has all of the micro machines. How many micro machines were there? Are those collectible? Yeah, those are super collectible. I'm trying to sell a Beanie Baby online right now. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not joking either. What are you selling? What do you got? What? That's it's like a skeleton. It's for real. It's a death Beanie Baby. Oh wow! It's got the tag. Ooh! It's got the tie tag on it. What's it? Are you on eBay with it right now? Yeah, I don't think it's still, it's not, they're not, you know, the investment that we all made on Beanie Babies. (laughs) I'll tell you what, my Beanie Baby business, my stocks are doing a thing right now that I personally refuse to do. They are taking a bath. (laughs) (laughs) Did you, is that your only Beanie Baby? That's my only Beanie Baby. I can't remember where I got it, but I just thought like it was hilarious that they made death, (laughs) that death was a Beanie Baby and I like... I don't think I paid for it. I think I. Do you think that there are people who still have hordes of Beanie Babies? For sure. And are waiting for the market to go up? Or do you think there's just never going to be interest in Beanie Babies again? You might as well burn them. I mean, I guarantee there are people that have hordes that are thinking, that are hoping. And I, and no, I do not think. Still? I think like whatever's left over needs to dwindle to a very small number. And then many years from now, one person will. Right. Remember. I just wonder if it'll go through one of those almost like what was it old uh, Atari cartridges that they had? Didn't they buried a bunch of them out in the woods? Like in, yeah, ET. And so there was this mass amount. They had no value at all. But yeah, I very publicly getting rid of them. And I think Beanie Babies are famously now one of the worst collectible investments of all time. Right. What about Pogs? I don't know. Pogs are cool still, right? <laughs> don't kids play with Pogs? I think asbestos chips. Yeah, those. I mean, those are worth some. Those are collectible. All right. hey, Dave, do you do you collect any stuff? Any weird things like that to flip? I collect uh, like uh, off-brand bootlegs. So I have like Mexican He-Man and oh, nice stuff like that. But I'm I'm super cheap. Yeah, because they're some of those are very expensive. But I, I I like to find them in the wild and bring them home. Like, uh, you ever been to a place called Trader's Village? <laughs> I have been to Trader's Village. Yeah. I bet Where's you get a lot Trey? of those. There. Oh, is that in Arlington? Yeah. I've never Last been. time I was in Texas, I went there like second day I was back. Got your priorities in line. I like it. Oh, yeah. I was a kid. I don't know about now, but Ohio had like amazing flea markets with the weirdest off brand toys that I'd ever seen. Is that still the case? Yeah. Uh, 
flea markets are pretty good. I, I go to one uh, way out in the country drive-in theater and uh, it's pretty dope. There's a lot of fun, weird stuff and they never really know what they have. Yeah. That's the best. I got a big hug mug. Do you remember the mug from true detectives? Oh yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. I got for 10 cents. <laughs> nice. Like you have to, like there's no thrift store in Austin that you're going to find like legitimately cool stuff at. Like oh, there's yeah. way too no. many pickers. But one time I was in Seguin, Texas <laughs> and found like five awesome t-shirt, like concert t-shirts that I wear two of and then sold the other three for, I don't know, a hundred bucks each or something. Wow. Man, concert t-shirts, old band yeah. t-shirts are a, a, a gold mine. Yeah. Uh, if you I've can find them, they're just really hard. But like, I was like a, a Dio t-shirt, uh, an Iron Maiden t-shirt, and something else. But yeah, you, I mean, like a hundred bucks is not even that much for them anymore. Yeah. Like, they'll, yeah. there's like shirts that will be up in like like a boutique or something in New York, they'll go for like four or 500 or something like that. Or like but Gallagher 1978 tour. I'm friend. I'm friends with him, so I can just get that. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to INS, the International News Service, your source for the most important weird news from across the globe. With news analyst Kevin Harrison, actor, comedian, and musician Mike Wiebe, and professional commentator Brian Camp. INS, the news you need. Welcome to the International News Service. I'm your host, Kevin Harrison, along with... I am Brian Camp. I am Mike Weavey. And guess what? We have a guest this week. Is it Mark Ryan? No, fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> he's, off in a, he's off in a cabin somewhere listening to a German... It's like a, it's a, it's a old German man and scraping a pipe recorded for seven <laughs> hours. <laughs> <laughs> he's, a, he's, a, he's a German guy with a uh, metal pipe scraping an empty rusty barrel. <laughs> wow. Mm-hmm. Mark's just got on a pair of headphones and he's clutching each earpiece and he's just slowly nodding his head back and forth <laughs> as he listens to the scraping sound of the old man yeah. in the pipe. I bet it's really well recorded. Well, I'm sure he's letting everybody know. <laughs> mm-hmm. So uh, who is here if it's not Mark Ryan? It, it, we have a guest. It's Dave Cheryl. Hello, everybody. You know, I, I, by the time this has come out, your celebrity status will have been uh, is already minted now. But by then, it will <laughs> certainly have grown because uh, you had a this week when we're recording this. You had a good week because you kind of got some uh, some Twitter buzz. Hey, what happened? I uh, put my painting on. I made a video of my painting that was, I uh, took a motel painting and I added uh, Suicide Squad to it. And uh, it got retweeted by James Gunn, which was, and Patton Oswalt, which was pretty cool. And said, David Ayer. And David Ayer. <laughs> <laughs> so two angry. Suicide Squad directors and Patton Oswalt and Modoc. What a good sport that David Ayer did that because he did the really bad Suicide Squad that he, you know, he claims he got fucked over really bad by. It. Maybe he did. I'm sure his cut would have been better. 100% his cut would have been better. Yeah, yeah, I, I believe that. It would have had to have been, right? Yeah. Yeah. I really, I mean, I like that. So you must have liked it too in order to want to paint those characters. I, I really dug it. Oh, absolutely. It's great. Super so fun. How many, how many of these paintings have you done where you, you take like a, what, like a, like a hotel landscape, and then you paint over that? Yeah, I add uh, characters to it. I've done it for about six years, and I've maybe done 100 or so. Oh, wow. I have a lot of art questions because I know very little about art. <laughs> well, you should ask me. You, actually, I'll, you, I'll, I'll take some of those questions. That's, I, you know I what, defer if, to Mike. <laughs> no, if, yeah. that's okay. Mike, if you, if you know the answer pop on but okay <laughs> but maybe give well, just Dave plan, a chance plan to on me saying <laughs> some stuff too that's that's good I'd, I'd hate to i'd hate to have you on the outside of this conversation i know how seriously you take your well, art i just need to establish <laughs> i i have to establish art dominance and business dominance that's right well you know that's dave right, makes man. his living this way so he he has both 
I do. I make my living that way too. I I I do, <laughs> I do art is... and business for a living mm-hmm. too. Yeah. <laughs> we've, we've I do both. Little... I do both. Yeah. That's the, that's what's special about me. Is I do both. <laughs> yes. He does one. Yeah. He does one. So okay, who won? Who wins now? Yeah, okay, you can. I, I, you can be the winner, Mike. <laughs> I, I can be because I, I I mean I am. There's no like oh no, it's, it's not a choice. It's just did what's you, happening. Did you just let Mike be the winner? So you gave him permission. No permission for what? No, it sounded I, like you gave him permission to be the winner. I'll take I'll take permission. Some, uh, How about that I will take I will take you saying that I'm allowed to do that. When someone lives in a fantasy world, sometimes it's important to... Oh, uh, yeah, a fantasy world where a fucking giant star kills people and suicide squads. <laughs> what are you talking about? Who's living in a <laughs> fantasy world now? James Gunn and Dave. That's who lives in a fantasy world. I live in a world of business and fact and money. Where I buy and sell people like you every day. Ask your, ask your questions. That's no, the good <laughs> Thank you for permission to ask the questions. Uh, God damn it, Mike. I forgot what I was going to ask. <laughs> this is, like, can I just say that this is going exactly as, as I expected yep. it to? Yeah, this is beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I love this. Half ass is kind of our. All right, we'll, try, we'll come back. Well, let's get the story started. We can always come back oh, to oh. Brian's one no, or two questions. You, Brian had a question about art. Yeah, and then he got a little too, uh, you know, intimidated by me. But let me right. let me uh, let me say, mm-hmm. hey, listen, you're in a, let me say, hey, you're in a safe space. Oh, <laughs> ask, that's, ask, how ask kind your, of you? Ask your little questions. You ask your dumb question, Brian. Not dumb. <laughs> little. God, you guys are fucking. It's not a dumb shit. question. This... It's just a little. little... <laughs> this is not fun for me at all. This is this is the second or third week in a row where the two of you have decided ganging up on me would be a good idea. May I ask my question? Yes, ask your question. I guess. <laughs> Dave. Yes. <laughs> I don't really have a question anymore. <laughs> right. Do you prefer what are your what are your favorite colors to paint with, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> Green and yellow. Green and yellow. Oh, there is yeah. a painting behind you. Is that is that one of yours? No, that's uh, Steve Arrett, my friend. Uh, Monster Steve. He's very cool. Monster Steve. Okay, that's well, a pretty cool yeah. painting. It's kind of a graffiti artist. I feel like you kind of tricked me by putting that behind you. I feel like this was a setup that maybe you and Kevin worked out <laughs> Wait, ahead of time. Brian, did you did you not look up any of Dave's paintings? I looked at all of his paintings. I saw. He, so he could paint that if he wanted to. Do you see behind me, by the way? That oh, is, yeah, I've seen that. That's a painting that my grandmother left me. Did she do it? No. No, she has <laughs> no. Then it needs a Godzilla. No, no talent. Just, But it reminds me of a hotel painting. It's a lighthouse and a field of flowers. It brings me peace. Yeah. I would hate for anything unusual to be in it. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like you're you're uh, judging Dave's art. Not at all. His I just livelihood. Think- I think sometimes there's a place in this world for beautiful, serene things. There's also a place in this world for a uh, gamera to breathe fire on them. <laughs> <laughs> that place does does indeed exist. All right, let's let's quit shooting around. Quick question: Have you ever pen- yeah. painted Jet Jaguar? Ooh. Uh, no, not yet. I should. Though. Oh, that would be a good one. He's. I like. I like him. Yeah. Have you seen his Monster yeah. Island painting? It's pretty good. Yeah, I like the Monster Island one yeah. a lot. Yeah, that one's huge. It was... But Jet Jaguar was only in like one, uh, yeah. one movie. It was the robot, right? Yeah. Well, he's like a Ultraman looking type guy. Right. All right. Let's get our let's get the first story started here. Let's get this first story. Let's get the business news. So what are we doing? Stories? Could you explain to the people listening what this is? These are all business stories, right? The first story is uh, art related. So Dave, Dave can give us his input all on right. this first story. For Ooh, sure. Have you ever forged right. a painting, Dave? Ooh. <laughs> yeah. I yes, I have. Yes. I I forged Pogo the clown paintings. Did you really? Yeah, I do it all the time. That's so. <laughs> I figure if there's somebody you could rip that off, that is like really. God damn it! That's really, and it's got to be fucking easy to do too. Oh my right? god, it's so easy. You don't have to have brushes. You just. <laughs> yeah, 
Pogo the Clown, Brian. I don't know. I'm waiting for... That is uh, uh, the the character invented by, and I guess sort of personaed by, John Wayne Gacy. Oh, okay. And, and, uh, yeah, so you're just you're making a little extra dough off some creep, creepy creepoids out there. <laughs> that sounds that are just, smart you know, to me. Like, yeah, it's better that you make money than him because he's just... He's, he's just, dead, right? Brian, you got somebody who's dead. <laughs> right, this is, you know what? Things are looking up. <laughs> I heard that he doesn't even uh, do the paintings himself. Really? Like when he was in prison, he would pay pay people to do the paintings. Oh, oh. Yeah. And they're they're not good, so I don't even understand why he yeah. you know, would bother. It's definitely have you, like... I shouldn't have, have you sold a a Pogo the Clown painting? Oh yeah. Seven or eight. <laughs> <laughs> so good for you. you Sign Gacy on him? Uh, I just try and make them look like the original painting. So nice. Whatever is right. on the painting, I do that. That's awesome. Well, I, I, I've always, I always ask, or I've never had an opportunity to ask somebody if they forge paintings because, like, somebody who plays guitar, like Mark's a guitar player. He'll hear this, yeah, and Mark's an accomplished play. guitar player, and, yeah, and Mike too, plays but... guitar. Yeah, right. Mark is, yeah, uh, and and Mark uh, can play music like other musicians right yeah, it's okay. mm-hmm. it's okay. that's that. great but i feel like like and i've seen your paintings kevin said did look and you are a very talented <laughs> artist right no, those are dave's yes. paintings i, I don't paint. i'm not i'm not thanking you kevin i'm trying to keep this directed towards where i want to go with this statement so please <laughs> oh, aside, I, 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 I hate to think i was interrupting you i know how much you hate interruptions when people are talking brian I've never interrupted anyone. I've merely <laughs> attempted to clarify things to assist the listener. Uh-huh. And that's all I'm doing right now. Okay. Yes, go ahead. The point is that... So what you're saying is... In the world of painting, it feels like the bar to say that you're a painter is much lower than the bar to say that you are a, a musician, Ouch. right? Now, I'm not talking about Dave. I just established I'm not talking about him. So I'm saying that... I've in my life I've met very few people that uh, uh, Tidwell is one of them who I think that I'm I am I'm jealous of anybody's talent certainly of yours and of any musicians and but of mine no not really uh, but I'm certainly <laughs> jealous no not at all and I not can't say the least bit line, but a little no, bit sometimes never 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 bit. happened one time. never been a second in my life that that has been the feeling I've had right. but the well, point well, is uh, you still aren't dominant in this situation that's not what i'm trying to do uh you are one of the first people i've ever met that i thought this is somebody who could probably copy somebody else's artwork so Mm. i'm happy to hear that you've copied a well-known serial killer's artwork yeah (laughs) that's all well if i was a better uh painter i would copy hitler's artwork yeah Um, but he Uh was a very good painter was he the podcast is about to take a A crazy turn (laughs) I didn't say he was right. I said he's, he's just a very good painter. He just did landscapes, right? Yeah, he did beautiful landscapes. Yeah, I I just listened to a, a another podcast about uh, this guy who like forged a bunch of Hitler diaries oh, and, uh, I remember and that. made made a oh, lot wow. of dough uh, selling those. How many diaries could somebody have, though? Just, I mean, a bunch. They're just like, ah. Did he, like, forge the, the same diary over and over again and sell them as unique diaries? He wrote a series, and it was just, yeah, it was like five, I don't know. And it was just like, ah, Monday morning, fucking Poland. Uh, yeah. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> Direct quote. I was watching uh, It's Always Sunny, an episode of It's Always Sunny, and the whole thing was... Uh, Mac was trying to exploit the art world by just like getting Charlie and just telling people how shitty his life was and just use <laughs> bad drawings. But the whole thing was like it was just bad. But he was just like, and it's weird, you know, that kind of thing really does kind of coexist. I mean, sometimes it doesn't matter, but sometimes it's very clear. Like the story of the artist is way more important than the actual artwork. Sometimes. I think that's true about art too. I think what you're painting is more important than how you painted it. Cause there's, there's photorealistic paintings that are just amazing. And you're just kind of like, well, it's good, but yeah, you know, it's, it's what you paint and how you paint it. It's all ideas. Hold on. We've got, this is a good lead in for a first story. Okay. 
So the first story comes to us from Artnet News. Artnet is like a it's like a art marketplace and then uh they have a news Is it artnetnews.net? Artnetnews.net.org.gov. Dot UK. Dot edu. <laughs> And this is a news source, is what you're telling yes, us. Yes, this is a news source for art. Okay. And also an art marketplace. In June, an Italian artist named Salvatore Garau made headlines when his, quote, immaterial sculpture, that is, a work of art made literally of nothing, sold for $18,300 at auction. Oops, I'm angry already. <laughs> <laughs> now, Tom Miller. A performance artist from Gainesville, Florida, is threatening to sue because he said he installed his own invisible sculpture in Gainesville's Bo Diddley Community Plaza in 2016. Tom Miller titled his sculpture Nothing and built it over five days with a team of workers who mimed moving blocks of air. That's pretty funny. It's funny. <laughs> I kind of like I kind of like the Gainesville guy. Yeah, Tom Miller's winning. <laughs> yeah, Tom Miller compares his sculpture to Seinfeld, a show that's famously about nothing. Adding, "quote When I saw Garrell's work, I thought, well, that's exactly my idea. I should be credited with nothing, specifically the idea of nothing fashioned into sculpture form." And Gainesville, Florida, not Italy, is where nothing happened first. They seem fun. Yeah. <laughs> Although I would have liked it more if he would have uh, said that if, if his sitcom reference was Empty Nest. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think Tom Miller drives a car with action figures glued to the top of it? Oh, yeah. I think he, he, he drives an invisible car. <laughs> it's a bike. <laughs> <laughs> he drives a bike and tells people it's his car. He goes, vroom, vroom. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Miller's lawyer was also quoted as saying they sent Garau a letter and, quote, are getting ready to file if we are not able to work out an amicable resolution. I'm willing to bet Tom Tom's lawyer's invisible, too. <laughs> of course, invisible artwork is nothing new. In 1958, Yves Klein exhibited an empty gallery space, and in 1992... Tom Friedman installed an invisible object on top of a heavy base and sold it for around $31,000. Yeah, who, how do you, I mean, it's got to be the base. There's got to be something about the base that, right. that signifies there's nothing on top of it. Yeah. yeah. I, I like the idea of being that rich that you buy stupid shit like that. That's all I could think is like, what are you fucking paying for? Why would you pay for that? Like, I, I'm in on the joke. Right. What's the dumbest thing that you spent the most money on? Maybe that Doctor Strange number one. Do you think maybe that was the biggest waste know. of money? No, because I didn't want. I didn't want to spend that much money on it. And two, it's worth a fortune now. Good business move. Well, it's worth more than Beanie Baby. I'll tell you that right now. I, I did buy one time like a bar. There was like these promotional bars. They only made a few of them of of like a Fight Club soap. But it like had Fight Club carved into it, but it was like an actual like promotional thing that was just made for like the studio or whatever. And I bought one, and then like, what do you pay? I can't. I, probably like fifty bucks or something, and and then uh, immediately uh, lost it. But I don't think it was <laughs> worth any. And then like found it like a year later, and it had like fallen into an area and melted. Oh um, <laughs> no. <laughs> And it wasn't like, oh, I love the movie Fight Club. It was just like, oh, I bet I this is going to be worth a fortune someday. And I, I think I checked recently. It's not worth, yeah, it's worth less than that. Dave, Dave, what's your answer? Uh, I bought a $65 uh, Cramps t-shirt, just a vintage yeah. Cramps t-shirt. See, uh. I find the value in those. They're old. You can't make, you can't like, you can repress... You can like re-screen. I'm sure that design, but you can't like the fa a fabric that's like super old and worn out. Like you can't like fake that, really. You yeah, know, don't make it that way yeah. anymore either. Do you wear the shirt? Oh yeah, yeah, but rarely. <laughs> but it's you know what? It's totally worth it. It's to me, it's only ridiculous if you never wear it. Yeah, I think the fun of something yeah. like that is is wearing it. That's we stand by your purchase, Dave. Yeah, actually, I think that's a good purchase. I don't think that's <laughs> right. dumb at all. 
I have a question for you relating to this story. So have you ever have you ever taken a thrift store painting, like a nice one of the bigger ones, and then just painted all of the invisible people from, from Comic Den? <laughs> yeah, you should do that. You should do that. It's the invisible girl, <laughs> the invisible it's, man. No, just go like, yeah, it's it's a landscape painting and you write the entire Marvel universe. It's every it's every X Men woman buck naked. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you can sell the shit out of that to like a real horny rich guy. Oh yeah. I always wonder if I did like uh nude uh, X-Men like uh, superhero stuff, erotic oh, yeah. superhero stuff if there'd just be a huge market for it. Oh, yeah. I don't yeah, I don't know. It feel it feels like that's probably more ubiquitous than <laughs> I can't imagine there aren't just entire like subreddits that are just that. Kevin, Kevin's like, I can't imagine them, and I can't imagine why they're all on my my, my, <laughs> my right. bookmarks. I me, can't imagine me, why they're all bookmarked here. Let me tab over real quick. Marge Simpson. <laughs> yeah, what? Marge Simpson was everywhere for a while, wasn't she? Yeah. yeah. Looking lusty. I love, uh, back to uh, like flea market and stuff, I really do love a good... Uh, bootleg bart simpson t-shirt oh yeah from the heyday of like oh, simpsons wow. merch and there was just tons of like mexican bark simpson saying it's a chicano thing you wouldn't understand and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like weird like it, things you know just just like i don't know why that's bart simpson right except that he was famous yeah. yeah. Just, why why only have one way to sell this shirt when we can have two ways to sell this shirt? There's a Padre Island t shirt that was bootleg and I think somebody's making it again. But it's got Slimer with two big butts and it says I ain't afraid of no butts. <laughs> <laughs> I love it when it doesn't make sense. <laughs> <It's so funny. laughs> That's like uh you might want to talk about this, Mike, with the uh the ad we got paired with for Redbubble. Yeah, so we we uh, here at the International News Service. So how, explain how this ad works. It's so re- we do our merch through Redbubble, and you go there, but and it's just a generic Redbubble thing. It's just a. It was just a banner that I saw on Facebook. Yeah. While I was scrolling, because I think it. I think Redbubble auto detects the things that you follow. And so it, it auto generated this banner that had our t shirt. Banner it has our t shirt, it has even which is the evil microphone and then it's his official international news service uh t shirt and then right next to it it's a uh it's called Rim Reaper. <laughs> And it's the Grim Reaper, not unlike my Beanie Baby here. And the Grim Reaper is tonguing an asshole. And it's a very, like, comic. It's a very, I'll pull it up here. I mean, yeah. I mean it's a, it's the way a drawing should be, right? It's... Yeah, it's the way, yeah. There's no way anybody spent more than, more than four minutes on that sketch. Oh, man. And then when it's perfect, you're done. The look in his eyes is pretty good. Yeah, he's he's liking that. Can you see that, Dave? <laughs> Dave, I sent it to Dave. It's gorgeous. Yeah, he's the Rim Reaper. <laughs> now, my question is: Does does his tongue kill those assholes? <laughs> Do you think that that asshole has like no sensation, or does the, the does it just start rotting? He's a reaper, so he's he's, he's sucking the soul out of the asshole. Maybe. Uh, yeah. Maybe. Yeah. That's how he extracts the soul. Well, I mean, yeah, it's, yeah. it could be a corpse already too. I mean, right? it it is an exit. Oh, it could be. Yeah, anal linguist. <laughs> <That's Nicola. laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just curious if if Andy Rooney has anything to say about. <laughs> <anal> <laughs> Why do we have our skeletons eating buttholes, eating ass, but even the construct of death? It's not sanitary, even if you're already dead. (laughs) So so we're going to try something new. Oh. Yeah. So for... Something new you say, Kevin. Yeah. So for a long time, we've talked about doing weird news stories from history. Mm -hmm. And Dave, we haven't really talked about this, but Dave is from Ohio. Mm. He's originally from Texas, but he's how long have you lived in Ohio now? Uh, Eight years. Eight years. You're in Ohio right now? Yes. Oh. 
Uh-oh. Kevin, you should have told us that. I didn't know. Brian, why, why are you blocking your feed now? I'm not blocking anything. <laughs> I just, I, I like to find out people. It's like, it's, I like to know. I like to hear if people are from different places. Yeah. He's from Ohio. <laughs> I never met a decent person from Ohio before. You're <laughs> jealous of our delicious Mexican food. You, well. <laughs> Brian, you've met me though for a long time, like 30 years. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm well aware of where you're from, Kevin. <laughs> I, <laughs> I am jealous of your you get you get the you get dry runs of every possible restaurant oh, that before is true. it goes anywhere else. Every newscaster sounds like they're from your state. You get all the halls of fame. Yeah. <laughs> we do have all the halls of fame. Yeah. You, you have a you have a area that uh, controls its hippies well. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's right. That's fucked up. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty bad. <laughs> hey, uh, credit where credit's due, right, Mike? Uh, <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't feel good about as uh, so saying that as I was saying it. Yeah. Don't say there. you didn't. But you said it. You might yeah. as well feel great about it because yeah. it's definitely going to be in. Mark's not getting rid of that. Yeah, he's not. <laughs> Oh, yeah. So Dave's from Ohio, as we just established. And there's a lot of weird news that comes from that state. So, uh, and I'm going to, uh, I'll post the sources for this on uh, in the comments on social media when we post these stories. But uh, it's too long to rattle off like seven things here. But we're going to go back to 1955 to a place called Loveland, Ohio. And this is where Dave lived before he moved to Texas the first time. <laughs> Uh, yes. Yeah, this is this is uh uh Dave's uh birthing ground. Well, I know that I know that Loveland got its name uh because the founder would just stop there and looked around and was like, "Man, I love land." <laughs> <laughs> so, Loveland is in the southwest corner. It's about 20 uh it's about 25 miles northeast of Cincinnati, which is right on the the Ohio Kentucky uh, Indiana border. It has mm-hmm. a sister city in Florida called Hate Water. <laughs> <laughs> so in 1955, oh. <laughs> Loveland was a sleepy town of around 3,000 people. Sources vary a lot for this part of the story, but in spring of that year, a short order cook, or some sources say he was a traveling salesman or a businessman. He was driving at night over a bridge across the Little Miami River in Loveland, Ohio, when he saw something strange. He noticed three beings near the bridge talking amongst themselves. They were about three to four feet tall, with leathery skin, bulging eyes, and webbed hands and feet. Suddenly, one of the beings noticed the man and gracefully pulled out a wand, waved it above his head, and then the wand shot sparks into the air. The man panicked and sped away, but supposedly he couldn't stop smelling alfalfa and almonds. Flash forward 17 years to March 3rd, 1972, when a police officer was driving in the same area around 1 a.m. Suddenly, a creature darted in front of his police car, hopped the guardrail, and jumped into the Little Miami River. The only thing it left behind was scratch marks on the guardrail. The officer reported the creature was three to four feet high had frog-like features, and it was similar to the original one cited in 1955. Hmm. Sounds like the singer for Greta Van Fleet. <laughs> <laughs> Two weeks later, another officer was driving in the same area when he saw what he believed to be roadkill. He got out to clear it off the road when it jumped at him and then scrambled under the guardrail. The officer said, I know no one would believe me, so I shot it. <laughs> that's how i do it that's how that makes sense if i ever think that people might doubt what i'm going to say yeah. i kill the thing <laughs> yeah you can't doubt a body that's my motto yeah that, it's, <laughs> you know what <laughs> yeah. a lot of truth in that that should be in the constitution mm-hmm. <laughs> the 11th amendment you can't doubt a body I think it's implied by the second. That's... Constitution is the greatest thing ever written. My favorite piece of literature. Yes. But if I were to write a sequel, what I would you... definitely write, you can't doubt a body. What would you call the sequel? Constitution part two. Back in business. 
<laughs> Would you be saying that you can't doubt a body as just an affirmation of something that we all know to be true or as an instruction that people are not allowed to doubt a body? It's America. You're not allowed to. Okay. The officer then threw the creature's body into his trunk and showed the other officer who confirmed this was the creature he'd seen. I couldn't find any explanation, though, of what happened to the body after that. The next sighting wasn't until 2016 when some college students were playing Pokemon Go at Lake Isabel in Loveland. According to one of the witnesses, quote, We saw a huge frog near the water. Not in the game. This was an actual giant frog. Then the thing stood up and walked on its hind legs. I realize this sounds crazy, but I swear on my grandmother's grave, this is the truth. He claimed the frog was about four feet tall and, quote, Not sure if it was a frog man or just a giant frog. Either way, I've never seen anything like it. However, after the 2016 incident was reported in the press, the officer who shot the creature in 1972 reached out to the news to say what he'd killed was a three to three and a half foot iguana that was missing its tail and that he had originally told the story to an author of a book about urban legends, but the author had omitted the part about the frogman being an iguana. It sounds like somebody got to him. Mm hmm. Yep. Who, who do you think got to him? Maybe there was somebody in Slovakia who was busy <laughs> stuffing frogs for a diorama. Mm -hmm. Damn, that's a callback. Damn, that's a fucking callback, motherfucker. Mm -hmm. yeah, it is. God damn. <laughs> like a steel trap. I can't even remember what this story's about. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's how you know you're supposed to take Adderall, right? When you when you still can't really focus. Yeah. It's starting to wear off. Oh, it, no. was, it was a lot earlier today that I took it. Is your business high dwindling? Yeah. Yeah. And my seven martini lunch is starting to <laughs> wear off too. Starting yeah, to get I've, sleepy. I've never had a martini. What? I've never had a martini. Man, they are fucking great. Are they really? I love them. I mean, they're real... They're real boozy. They're they're not they're not like uh, you know they're not sweet. They taste like harsh booze. Okay. And I think that like as I'm getting older, my taste buds are like melting off or whatever, and I'm just like tasting. I'm getting like I understand now. Like I don't think that grandmas grew up loving licorice. You know, <laughs> I think that. I think, you know, I'm serious, but I think that, like, maybe that's a thing when your taste buds are just so, like, kind of, like, brutalized from life that when you're in your 80s, you start eating licorice, and it starts, black licorice starts tasting good. Right. And then you get even older, and then you die, and then you become the Rim Reaper. <laughs> <laughs> and it tastes good. That's, yeah. That explains so it. That's... You're, you're saying your grandma's the Rim Reaper? Hey. Come on now, Kevin. That's not That's appropriate. My, dude, no. Come on, dude. Man. Dude. <laughs> dude. Dude, you take it back. That's my grandma. <laughs> Who's the Rim Reaper? D dude. <laughs> That's right. Not cool. Just cramming her aged tongue through her dentured lips. <laughs> Grandma's not my grandma is not the Rim Reaper. Just let me say that publicly, as far as you know. I I know well. I I know for a fact. I mean, look at the picture of the Rim Reaper, and I'll send you a picture of my grandma. They look nothing alike. <laughs> I mean, just to start with that, on top of what I assume is a thing that my grandmother never did. Yeah. Well, what is the name of these frog cryptids? Yeah, let's get back to the thing we're talking about. The, the, the Loveland frog. Not very clever. Well, you know. Don't make a dick on Ohio. <laughs> yeah, he's from there and he'll fucking get pissed. Yeah, he's. I can see the Ohio in pride swell. Yeah. Yeah. But why is it called the Loveland frog and not the Loveland frogs when the first yes. reported incidents was yes. three frogs? Dogs, one of which was magic. Yes. Like that's a that's a better cryptid because that's one Oh yeah, I forgot about the magic. <laughs> that's right. I forgot about that. Yeah. He's got a sparkler or, you know, 
a magic wand of some kind. Huh. No, it's a magic wand. And he gracefully in his flippered like don't frogs have longer forearms than their like their their arms are jointed, right? Like a human's. Okay. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And isn't their yeah. forearm much longer than their upper arm? Yeah. Um, yeah. Like I'll lean in so I'm this is my I'm this is good. for the lean listener. In so the listener can yeah. just, for the listener, my arms are above my head and I have thrust my hands towards the camera <laughs> so as to create the impression <laughs> that my forearms are much longer than my upper arms and I am splaying my fingers out and I've got a magic wand. <laughs> Y'all ever had frog legs before? Yeah, I have. Yeah. I've had frog legs. Uh, yeah. I, I think I have. I Not can't since really I was remember. A kid. We should go out for In Ohio. Martinis, martinis and frog legs. Ooh, that's my favorite Reverend Horton Heat album. <laughs> that's a stuff. That's a good line, man. <laughs> that's the old papa. Are there any other cryptids from Ohio? Uh, there are, but like you know, Bigfoot being a big one. There's a bog monster somewhere. Yeah. Oh yeah, Mothman. Mothman uh, was sighted quite a bit in Ohio when he was also sighted in Point Pleasant because they're just kind of across the border from each other. I then wonder if he's friends with the Frogman. Oh. Mothman was the other side of the state. It was the the southeast, and this is the southwest. They probably have conventions or something. Yeah, cryptid, yeah, but they get together. Yeah. yeah, cryptid conventions. Fair. They don't have a lot of friends. It sounds like there's been then really only one credible sighting of. The Loveland Frogs, and that's the first one where the salesman or short order cook saw three frogs, one of which he pulled out of one and cast a spell. What? Why did? Why didn't the cop take a photograph of the fucking body? They didn't have a camera mm-hmm. phone back then. Well, maybe not a camera phone, but he put the body in a trunk. Surely, somewhere in Loveland, someone owned a camera. Right. I'm a little flustered by the Loveland Frog because I've yeah, never heard of the Loveland Frog and I want there to be more about the Loveland Frog. So we, we've got a little bit more here. Okay. So what did the college students see in 2016 if the Frogman was killed in 1972? Well, a local high school student later confessed that he posed as the Frogman while dressed in a homemade frog costume. Mm. But this isn't quite the end of the story. In 2014... The Cincinnati Fringe Festival featured the premiere of the bluegrass musical Hot Damn, It's the Loveland Frog. <laughs> so, wait a minute. Yeah. So in 2014, yeah, before the 2016 sighting, so more than likely the homemade frog costume was from the musical mm-hmm. Hot Damn, It's the That's Loveland Frog. That's good detective wow. work. I, I hadn't considered that. Well, see, the problem is that the high school student who confessed it confessed it to his high school newspaper. So that's where I read. Oh. Uh, but they, they did show the costume, which doesn't look convincing in any way. If you saw it, uh, you wouldn't. This be like, seems like a psyop. <laughs> <laughs> How so, Mike? Well, they're trying to make us seem like this frog thing and ain't real by having this high school kid. This kid's a patsy. Right. <laughs> It's a false flag operation. Yeah, yeah, I can tell you what, he's gonna he's gonna uh get uh suicided this kid. With a space laser? Something. I mean he's gonna he's gonna yeah, get suicided. That's what they call it. <laughs> I know there's more to this, or at least a little bit more, and I just I'm I'm disappointed that anyone would put on a costume, fool uh, another human being into believing that there is a giant version of any small animal. And then confess to it later on. Yeah. If you get so far as to actually as to successfully convince someone, even one person, even one person, you go to your fucking grave. You don't say a word. Also, the the town needs. The, I mean, I, the town has to need some kind of tourism. Yeah, it's whimsy. It's go, fun. Yeah, you roll into the gas station. You get the um. This place sure is hopping because of the Loveland Frog, <laughs> um, coffee mug. You know, Point Pleasant, not that far away, has their own Mothman Festival, has a Mothman Museum, yeah. has Mothman Tourism. Right. I looked for Loveland, Ohio. I could find, on the entire internet, I could find one Loveland Frog t-shirt. Wasn't that great? 
and then they got no museum. They got nothing. You know, at least the the Yeti in Russia had to get caught with DNA testing before he confessed. And it turned out it was just a Russian woman. <laughs> Mike, do you think the loving frog has ever hopped up on somebody and pinned him up against a tree? <laughs> um, I don't know if it's that kind of situation. Um, I mean, you know, because here's the thing about uh, the frogs. You've ever seen that heard the phrase about tighter than a frog's asshole. <laughs> yeah, I have heard that phrase. This seems like the kind of thing where it wouldn't it would be a frog that would want to look at your ass and say <laughs> that's not that tight. <laughs> that kind of thing. He points at butts and 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 then and then judges them harshly. So it's a it's a body shaming cryptid. <laughs> it's a body shaming cryptid. <laughs> and, but it's it's specifically butts. Yeah, I think it goes up to butts and points at them, and then does a Caesar thumbs up or thumbs down. <laughs> this little froggy thumb. This little frog thumbs. Yeah, I would think that you see it. You're not sure if it's sentient until all of a sudden it's looking at asses and going thumbs up or thumbs down. Uh-huh. Anyway, I do I do endorse killing them if you see. <laughs> oh you sure. On site. Is this just because you like frog legs? I just don't want my, I don't need fucking things talking about my ass. I know I'm out of shape. COVID's been rough. So the bluegrass musical, Hot Damn, It's the Loveland Frog. Mm -hmm. It was written by local playwrights Joshua Steele and Mike Hall. Uh, Not national playwrights? They're not not off-Broadway people? Not yet. It's about a bluegrass band that heads out to rescue someone from the Loveland Frog. The musical played for five shows with reviews ranging from, quote, The Loveland Frog will make you hoot and holler with laughter. Great job. To, quote, The show is okay. (laughs) (laughs) Pauline Kale strikes again. (laughs) If that's the worst review you get, though, that's pretty good, right? I take it. I've had a lot worse reviews of my music. No, that'd be... I'm okay with that. I'm okay with okay. Yeah. Just five stars and okay. Right. But it probably, they say okay, they mean Oklahoma. Then their opinion is meaningless. Yep. yep. Hey, we got a five star review from Oklahoma. From a garbage person from Oklahoma. (laughs) They they probably turned on their computer and then a cat ran across their keyboard and that was the most (laughs) that it ever made sense. Right. They were were busy face on the floor praying to get the demon out of the room. Mm -hmm. The computer turned on and made a beeping sound <laughs> shake it right keep shaking it because i think it's a sketch a sketch <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well that's about it for the uh <laughs> Robert, do we have i feel like there's more art questions to be, to well, be yeah. asked. uh dave where can uh where can people find you find your work uh what can you know where can they get themselves uh a nice Suicide Squad painting, Godzilla painting, whatever, you know, where do they find that stuff? <laughs> All my prints and my fun stickers and stuff like that are on arrowheadgoods.com. And I have an art show coming up. So if you're up in uh, Northeast Ohio and you want to come out January, uh, the first Friday in January, I'm having my first uh, solo art show and it's called, uh, that's what I call Art Volume 1. Now, if I was in Loveland, Ohio, how would I get yeah. to your art show? <laughs> <laughs> Take a frog. Take a frog. <laughs> I, I, now, is it, am I right in assuming that future pieces by you will feature the Loveland Ooh, frog predominantly? Yeah. I being... should do an all cryptid one. Oh, yes. That would be nice. Yeah. 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 Just all yeah. the cryptids. But leave out, leave out Bigfoot. Or I could think of a very specific thing Bigfoot would be doing <laughs> oh, <well. laughs> that I have not seen captured in art. Good listeners know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Just laughing. No. What what, what about what about a, a a painting, a thrift store painting with the you know the host of the show? Yeah, he wants to make money. Actually, he's trying yeah. to make a living <laughs> at this. Right. Is thing? It's you guys, but it's just your voices. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. yes, yeah. sort of like sort of like the invisible thing. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right. Hey, what about uh, what you ever thought about doing one of them NFTs? I don't know what that is. <laughs> Uh, 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 Dave, you heard of cryptids. Well, this is crypto. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> really, really doing it tonight. Yeah, so, man. Where can they find you on social media, like James Gunn uh, and uh, Patton Oswalt did? Uh, Dave Ruins Art is my username on most uh, social media. Okay. And I do, a, I do a YouTube channel called Art Hole that gets watched by tens of people. Nice. Art Hole. Is that all one word? Two words. Thanks for asking. I think Dave Ruins Art is all one word, though, right? Yeah, that's all one word. Okay. Cool. And uh, let's see, Mike, we got uh, this episode comes out on September 1st. You got anything coming up? I've got Punk Rock Bowling at the end of uh, September. And I think I have to announce by then, and this won't come out till then, but all oh, my Toadies dates got canceled because of uh, the Delta variant. So I'm a little bummed out about that. Oh. If you're planning on coming out to any of those, uh, mm-hmm. Hold on, we'll we'll do it again next year. Nice. Which of which of your bands is playing uh, punk rock bowling? Both of them, the Draculas and the Riverboat Gamblers. Nice. Hey, hey, Mike. Yeah. Maybe one of those toadies can whip out a wand and cast a spell ah! for COVID to go away. Ah! Full circle or callback? I don't know. Doesn't matter. But you know what? The first Thursday of every month, uh, I do a comedy show at the Buzz Mill. It's mm-hmm. called Excelsior. And uh, it's going to be a real good time that Thursday following this. That would be October 7th, I believe, Mike. October 7th, yeah. And that's the Buzz on Riverside in Austin, Texas. And if you're attending Fantastic Fest, maybe check out the premiere of the documentary I co-produced called This is Guar about the band Guar. And that's Guar with a G. That's Guar with a G. <laughs> All right. Nice. Well, I think that wraps up another week at the International News Service. Uh, check us out uh, across social media at International News Pod. Feel free to email us at internationalnewspod at gmail.com. And uh, we will see you next week. Thank you for listening to the International News Service. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. INS, the news you need.